This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. My guest this morning is Congresswoman Val Demings. In this portion of the conversation, we'll discuss the situation that's happening at the U.S.-Mexico border and whether she's considering a run for a statewide position. But first, more on the gun control legislation she'd like to see in the wake of the recent mass shootings. My father, I'll start with him. He was an avid hunter. Um, many times I remember we probably... This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. My guest this morning is Congresswoman Val Demings. In this portion of the conversation, we'll discuss the situation that's happening at the U.S.-Mexico border and whether she's considering a run for a statewide position. But first, more on the gun control legislation she'd like to see in the wake of the recent mass shootings. My father, I'll start with him. He was an avid hunter. Mm -hmm. um, many times I remember we probably, our family would not have had a meal, had dinner, had my father not gone hunting. He had a lot of guns. I grew up in a household uh, with guns. So this is not about taking guns again out of the hands of good, decent, law-abiding citizens. This is about keeping guns out of the hands of people who should not have them in the first place. Can't we have universal background checks? Mm -hmm. You think about it, Justin, there are a lot of professions that require background checks, require permitting uh, before they are able to engage in the work that they do. When a person is getting ready to purchase a firearm, what's so complicated about requiring that we have background checks and all gun sales with a few exceptions. Uh, some private gun sales between family members, for example, would be an exception, but who would be against that to ensure that guns don't fall into the hands of the wrong people? The mentally ill, I've said it many times before that we need to, as a nation, get serious about funding uh, mental health programs and counseling. We need to do that. But who would push back against having a background check to make sure that guns don't fall into the hands of the mentally ill? Do I have to talk about terrorists? And it's hit home, as you know, I was in the Capitol on January 6th, domestic terrorists who have proven to us, if we didn't know, we know now that they will do anything. And so who would object to a background check to make sure that people who want to overturn our democracy and do harm to those who try to prevent them from doing that, who would object to keeping guns out of their hands? So universal background checks, I mean, it is a must. As you know, as a nation, this is before my time in Congress, but we allowed assault, the assault weapons ban to expire. I hate that happened, Justin, because assault weapons, and we can call them rifles, we can call them weapons, we can use any terms that we want to because I've heard people try to say, no, that's not really what they are, there's something else. Well, regardless of what you call them, let's look at what they do. Assault style weapons were not designed for our streets. They were designed for our battlefields and they do exactly what they were designed to do for our men and women in the military who might find themselves in enemy territory. They're designed to inflict great bodily harm that is usually fatal on their targets. And we want our men and women in the military to have the most effective weapons and capabilities so they can come back home, our sons and daughters. Those weapons were never designed for our streets. Chances of survival, as we've seen this week, are extremely slim. And so we've got to do everything that we can. I was glad to hear President Biden come out with a strong statement that he is determined to ban assault rifles and weapons and hope that um, Congress will join him in that effort. And so, you know, red flag laws, we can talk about those. There are some ordinances even here in Florida where we've already seen the results, uh, the, the good results, if you will, on um, red flag laws. And so we need to do, I mean, those are just very quickly, um, pieces of legislation that I feel could make a tremendous difference if we would get those passed um, in the in Congress. Let's uh, discuss now um, 
what's happening at, at the southern border. Lots of finger pointing, obviously, about uh, who's at fault here. But the bottom line is that there is a, a growing situation happening, um, some even calling it a crisis. What is your take on what's happening right now? Well, what we're seeing at the border as we've seen at the border uh, for decades uh, is the result of inaction again um, uh, on the part of the federal government. How long have we been talking about immigration in this country? How long have we been talking about uh, coming up with a comprehensive plan that works, that is efficient and that works? And so the crisis that we're seeing at the border is nothing new. I know some people are trying to label it as something different. You know, it's a seasonal thing where we always see increases at our borders. With that said, um, we do need to do something about it. Uh, when children are involved, and you know, I'm speaking as someone who served as a social worker uh, before the police department and also uh, served as a sergeant and a detective in the Crimes Against Children unit. Children depend on us to take care of them. And our number one responsibility should be protecting our most precious resource, and that's children. And so we need to work very quickly and swiftly to make sure that we're able, the kids that are at the border, we need to make sure that we're able to process them quickly get them into a sponsor home, get them with a relative, get them out of CBP custody into HHS custody, make sure that we're addressing their emotional and physical needs. And we need to do that as quickly as we can. But I also like something else President Biden said. He talked about really looking at issues um, in, the, in the countries where the children and families are fleeing from. How can America help to address those issues? And I also think we have a direct obligation to do that as well, if we are who we say we are. And so with those two issues, looking at the issues in those countries, the problems, looking at what families and children are fleeing from, and also making sure that we can process asylum seekers and our children that cross the border in a more efficient and effective way are top priorities. And instead of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle looking yet again for another talking point, they need to join us in our efforts. Uh, there are some things that should be, that should receive great bipartisan support. The reduction of gun violence is one and also effective immigration reform is another. And I'm hoping my colleagues will, all of my colleagues will join us in those efforts. I just have to ask because there are rumors and different articles being written about what your future may hold. And uh, there are rumors about maybe a gubernatorial run, maybe a Senate run. So uh, are you interested in either one? And is that something that uh, maybe down the line that you will approach? Well, let me say this. I am considering a statewide run. Um, I've received so many calls and texts and emails from people not just around the state, but throughout the nation encouraging me to do so. But that would not be enough, even though that's wonderful for me to make that decision. I always, Justin, want to work where I feel I'm most needed. When I became a law enforcement officer, that was my marching orders to myself. When I retired from OPD and became a member of Congress, uh, that was my marching orders to myself as I'd listened to um, my friends and colleagues, some colleagues and people from around the state and around the nation. Um, that's where the buck stops. I will go where I feel I am most needed. I grew up in Florida. I've never lived anyplace else. You know, I am the daughter of a maid and a janitor who has had some pretty amazing opportunities. And if we were betting on me, most people probably would have not. What I want to do is make sure that every little boy and girl, regardless of the color of their skin, their sexual orientation, where they grow up, or how much money their parents have, have the same opportunities. I'm not sure mm -hmm. uh, the leaders in my home state feel the same way. And I do believe that Florida deserves better than what Florida currently has. So I'm working it out and I will continue to work it out. And believe me, when I make a decision, I will certainly let you know. 
My thanks to Congresswoman Val Demings for her time this week. For more information on the topics we discussed this morning, head to clickorlando.com. I'm Justin Warmoth. Hope you have a great Sunday.